welcome back to Season 5 of the Changing Earth Podcast with Sarah F. Hathaway. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway. Hi, and welcome back to the Changing Earth Podcast. This is episode number 198, Season 5, Episode 35. And today, guys, I have a very special introduction for you because today I am introducing Mr. Chin Gibson as my co-host to the show. He's going to be with us today, and then he's going to be back with us um, as we go into season six. So, Chin, thanks so much for joining me today and coming on and and, uh, being my partner in crime here. Hey, what's up? Chin's up, I should say. Chin's up. (laughs) Chin's up on the show. So let's just uh, do some catching up on kind of... uh, you know, what's been going on. Um, Like I was telling you before we started, I started my new job this week. So that was fun. Uh, (laughs) Selling uh, lots of insurance, getting people prepared. Right now I'm just doing a lot of study and I have to get my licenses back together and and stuff like that. So it's kind of boring, but it'll be fun eventually. Do you hand out a free... uh a free copy of your ebook with every uh, insurance you sell? (laughs) Yeah, with every policy. (laughs) If you really want to be prepared. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, slinging my eggs there, you know. I'll be slinging my wow. eggs for sure. Nice. Yeah, yeah, getting that going. So, um, and then my instructor was out of town, my martial arts instructor. He actually went to, uh, oh, Taiwan, like Bangkok over there. Uh, I don't know. My husband knows the exact country over there he went to. I'm lame. But we had a guy, <laughs> we had a guy, Mr. Diaz, filling in. And, man, he kicked our butts this past couple of weeks. So I was so tired, sinus infection, work, and get my butt kicked. Yeah, I was dead. Well, you go there on purpose, right? You're not, like, <laughs> kidnapped and brought to the studio. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I kind of was because I was teaching. I was filling in, trying oh, to help okay. out since okay. my instructor was gone. So I did miss some classes because of the stupid sinus infection. Yeah. So. That's been going around, even over here. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't usually have allergies, so I don't know if it's because uh, we had so much rain this year and it all just blew up all at once, or what. So, how's the weather looking over there? Uh, we we've had the past couple of days um, on the East Coast, we've had some crazy weather blow in and blow out. So uh, it's like sunny, and then all of a sudden it rains. And I saw a picture of Charlotte had some really bad uh, winds. So. We're having yeah, there was cold. like some tornadoes that came through. Yeah, moment, yesterday. Right? Yeah. And we have a, a cold front coming in this afternoon that they, well, you know, the weather man, he's always excited when bad weather's coming, but they're getting <laughs> yeah. all like amped up over it. So I don't know. We'll see. Crazy. Yeah. yeah we're, we're smooth sailing. You know, California is pretty, pretty boring all summer long for the weather man. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be hot. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be hot. That's we all. Had, Yesterday, it was supposed to be like 70% chance of rain and overcast, and we did a charity bocce tournament, and I'm like, great, you know, overcast, it'll be nice and cool, and no, sunny skies, fried myself. <laughs> Got all sunburned. I, we need to get jobs as weathermen. It doesn't matter how wrong you are. They just keep coming back. <laughs> so you're playing bocce ball? <laughs> so nice. there's free food and an open bar, and, you know, we just go and... You do silent raffles and stuff. So it's nice. It's That's already, awesome. We yeah, were we were actually good. playing croquet all day. So yeah, there you go. See. <laughs> yep. We set it up like the extreme course, though. You know, like got to go out around the pool, the water feature, <laughs> through smack the, the other ball. <laughs> Best yeah. part is smacking the other ball. Yeah, it is. Um, my one friend learned how to piggyback off his girlfriend, so you get a free turn when you yep. smack. You know, so he just kept smacking her all yep. the way up. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, she came that's in a, second <laughs> because oh, wow. of him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, really? That's my favorite part about bocce ball. It's just laying into the other balls on the court. <laughs> yeah, smash them all yeah. out of the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we play a lot of bocce ball, too. That's funny. It's fun. Yeah, it's not a very common uh, at pastime. So that's no. why I was like, really? That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's a good time. So we're still working on our garden, which is – never ending it seems like we grow rocks really well in california <laughs> <laughs> so we have to like bring in tons of soil 
and my dog's been like out there digging in it and they're laying in it and I'm like okay we have to have a fence now so we're kind of in a holding pattern because of that but my my wife has a bunch of indoor planters because we don't have a big yard and my dog likes to go and dig in her planters inside the house so it's inside the house yeah yeah she's oh, she likes yeah. the garden yeah you're like really dog <laughs> <laughs> okay it's like mud all over her puss and dirt all over the oh, um, no. yeah they uh, say you're not supposed to like dig in it in front of them because then they mm -hmm. see digging in it then they're gonna dig in it she wants to be just like her mommy yeah i'm like well i didn't pee in it <laughs> <laughs> you know the female dogs, you can't even pee it in there. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, alrighty. Well, what I was saying, one of the best things about having Chin on the show now is that you actually know the books. And so that's a delight for me because, uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of, well, this is what's happening. And the listener or the reader or the guest is like, uh-huh. I have no idea what you're talking about. So that's kind of cool. Cool. Little right piece. now I get a pop quiz every episode. Jeez. Hey, yep. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And especially since uh, you've already had a sneak peek at the next book. So everybody can be nice and jealous about that. So, yeah. Yeah. So that one's coming out though. Um, Endless Night is coming out in June. So um, it's finally going to be here. And uh, Hope on the Horizon is at the editor right now and that's book seven and my editor was very excited that i had a more cheery title finally <laughs> <laughs> she's like finally something cheery i'm like well you got to check the book out before you decide that <laughs> hey the whole th the whole journey started out in a wine cellar right, <laughs> right? How, how much cheerier can you get <laughs> i mean come on <laughs> it's my Perfect, that's, that's like, my favorite yeah. scene of the whole thing <laughs> okay there's other scenes but I, anything that starts in a wine cellar has got to be a good series. I, I reoccur the wine cellar too, because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you figure you'd have to have them. They have them a lot in the Midwest too. And that actually comes, um, one of our houses in Michigan, we, ha my grandpa actually had like this room that was like the wine storage area that he dug this deep hole. And as kids, we used to just throw rocks down there and everything. <laughs> Grandpa scare yourselves like, yeah grandpa would be like dude quit throwing rocks down there <laughs> we filled that sucker up <laughs> so i thought well you know um and they have a lot of those types of uh buildings in the midwest not out here in california but uh we have too much clay so hmm. everybody's like yeah you could always dig dig a room and bury your preps there and then wildfire can't get them yeah I'm like, yeah, that'd be great if I had some dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> like, you ain't going into this hill. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have a tunnel right through it. So, right. Yeah. So. Alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, let's see. Last week, Erica was uh, with Swenson, and you know she's just enduring his endless banter as he tries to just destroy all her hope. And so that's... He's a fun character. Mm -hmm. I know you guys all love him. Mm -mm. <laughs> and then let's see, this week we're going to be back with Vince and Bennett. And they're going back into Denver. So we don't want to talk too much about that. We'll get back to it after. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into chapter 35 of Dark Days in Denver. And then we'll be right back afterwards. Chapter 35 Denver appeared on the horizon a few hours later that day. Thank you so much for the truck gear, Vince told him. That saved us a ton of time. I'm just glad she made it, he said, patting the dashboard. I'll just be glad to get out of it, Star said sarcastically. She was squished in between two of Graham's sons, Eric and Kip. Their heads reached right about to her breast level, and they looked up at her with love-struck eyes. Bennett looked back, chuckling at the scene. There was a time that he would have loved to have been one of those little boys. Star was a beautiful woman, but now his heart ached for Michelle. He said a prayer for her and focused his attention forward. They were approaching the entry gate. Hello, gentlemen, a guard said, stopping them. Hello, they answered. Surprised to see a truck up and running, the soldier commented. I kept it out of the storm and fitted it with a bigger air filtration system. 
We can change the reserve air filter from the cab to keep it running, Gear told him. Nice, the soldier replied, looking curiously at Bennett. Aren't you First Sergeant Bennett? That's right, Bennett responded. Where's your stripes, sir? The soldier asked Bennett, noticing his shirt. The lieutenant general and I had a difference of opinions, Bennett responded. Well, whatever the problem, you led one hell of a fight down here, sir. What can I help you with, he wondered. We need to speak with Master Gunnery Sergeant Nickleton, Bennett said. I think he's over in the Littleton camp, the soldier replied. Thanks, Bennett said as they rolled through the gate. They followed a path cut through the destruction. The people shoveled the ash into piles, and they were doing their best to remake a community for the survivors. Vince hardly wanted to look out the window. He kept thinking about losing Erica, picturing her eyes and her smile. His heart ached, and his body hurt. Rolling to a stop in front of the mercenary encampment, the doors flew open. Everyone was looking for space after the cramped car ride. Nickleton was inside the main tent, directing operations. You guys wait here, Bennett told them. They welcomed the opportunity to take a moment and stretch while Bennett went in to talk. Bennett, you're back, Nickleton asked. I sure am, Ben, Bennett replied. Nickleton looked at him with a raised eyebrow. How many men did he send, he asked. None. He wouldn't send any, Bennett admitted. Patrick, I just got word you made it back, Lieutenant Colonel Virgist announced, entering the tent. Where's the reinforcements? They got hit bad, guys. The quakes and bombs, everything is gone. The people on the northern route have large amounts of casualties as well, Bennett admitted. There's going to be a lot more people headed your way. What about Erica, Cole asked. Bennett shook his head and stared back at Cole. Is Vince with you? He asked, looking at his shirt. Of course he is. I wouldn't let him down. We're going after her. I'm done taking orders, Bennett told them. Cole chuckled at his remark. Sounds like something Erica would say, he commented, looking down at the ground. Did you guys find out anything about the guy's tattoo, Bennett wondered. No, our communications are still down, but we did get an ID on the vehicle. It was a black Chevy Tahoe with a Colorado plate. The number was GKT680, Nickleton informed him. Okay then, that's what we're going on. We're headed towards Dallas. Hopefully we find something along the way, but if not... Harold will have intel, Bennett told them. I'm going too, Cole concluded, looking up at Bennett, his blue eyes shining through a smirk. Cole, your place in the Merc army will be lost. Merkley won't take us back, Bennett warned him. Forget Merkley. Erica needs us, Cole concluded. I'm going too, Nickleton decided, ripping the stripes off his sleeve. Ben, you can't do that, Bennett warned. The hell I can't. If my friends are going, I'm going along for the ride, Ben attested. We've got civilians that need housing until we can get back, Bennett informed him. We can talk with Eli and Darren and get them housed in the militia quarters, Cole suggested. Sounds good, Bennett concluded, heading outside with his friends. They drove the vehicle to the militia encampment while the group walked behind. No one wanted to pile that many people back into the truck. Vince went and greeted Eli. He was in command of the people there, trying to fill Cassidy's shoes. Gear, he delighted in seeing the man. What are you doing out here? Eli wondered. I need you to make sure my family is safe. I'm going to help Vince find Erica. My sister would approve, and I like that woman. She's a good friend, Gare told him. Couldn't agree more. I'll make sure Elizabeth and your kids stay safe. And I'm sure you have the same request, Graham, he commented. You know that I do, Graham agreed. And I couldn't thank you enough. We've got a couple more families with us that will need to be looked after, Vince told him. We got it. You guys just focus on getting her back. The faster you get on the road, the less time slips away, Eli told him. Vince loved the idea. He hated being here. He hated the memory of waking up here in this very town, knowing she was gone. Everyone went out to help with sorting gear into what was staying and what was going. The truck would still be loaded down with people and supplies on the way out of Denver. Ned limped over, trying to disguise his gait. He threw his pack into the truck as well. Oh, no. We're not taking any gimps along with us, Gear teased. I'm fine, brother. Look, he said, trying to dance around. Yeah, yeah, get in the truck, Gear laughed. The sun entered its peak in the sky, but cast the same hazy orange down when they were finally done prepping for the journey south. Thanks so much for your help, Eli, Vince thanked him, loading into the back of the truck. As he went to shut the door, he heard a voice yelling, Vince! Vince! Wait a second, Vince directed Gear. 
Looking down the road, he saw Greg and Penny running up to the truck. Could you use a couple more hands, Greg asked. Vince smiled widely, hugging his friends as he scooped them into the truck. It was packed. Gear and Bennett sat up front. Ned, Graham, and Cole were sitting on the bench seat behind them. Vince, Starr, Victoria, Nancy, Daniel, Nickleton, Greg, and Penny all rode in the back. It was going to be a tight fit, but nobody cared. They were together, heading out to find Erica. All right, Chin, so we got the story all laid out. And, uh, you know, Greg and Penny end up joining in for the mission. Vince is just stoked on that. And that's kind of like the super highlight of that chapter. We got Nickleton, Burgess, Greg, and Penny coming in. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad Vince is still around. You scared me a couple chapters back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember getting that message. Oh, you know? I was crushed. <laughs> Yeah, I figured, you know, it had to be pretty major, right, to be able to get Erica out of there, mm -hmm. you know. Something huge had to happen to be able to get her away from her her squad that's always with her, you know. What really killed me was um, having to take out Kyle. Mm. Um, I like that character a lot, so that was a bummer. Well, being a husband, I didn't like seeing Vince get shot. <laughs> yeah, Twice. right. Twice. <laughs> Well, and then I did the interview with um, Brian on, you mm -hmm. know, could he actually survive that encounter? And uh, he could have. He could have been messed happen. up. Yeah, yeah, crazy. So Swenson doesn't like the fact that he had survived. Ask me if I care. <laughs> that comes back to get him a little Can't bit Can't stand later. that guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he really developed as like a super – super uh, character. you always have to do a novelette just to him i've thought about it about doing mm -hmm. like um his origination story yeah that would be I, great that would yeah. be great. yeah i've thought uh, a lot about that because um as it, i can't give away too much because you know i'm mm -hmm. much further along in the story but um as that character develops you're gonna uh, he develops so yeah people like that even more so i've thought about doing that yeah it, it would be great Let's see where, and then, uh, yeah, we're almost done with this book. So then we get to introduce Endless Night and, you know, um, so we've been in my books, we've been all around the central region, right? Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to get readers inside the central region somehow. And so Swenson is, is how that's, how that's kind of being achieved so that, uh, I can paint that picture of what it really looks like in there. So, yeah, there's still a little bit more to come, <laughs> but we're almost there, so it's going to be fun. All right, so today um, I want to talk about doing the best you can with what you got, because to me, um, I really think that's the essence of being a prepper or a survivalist or just living every day, right? It's the reality of it. Yes. It's the, it's the everyday reality of prepping. Not the Hollywood version. Mm hmm It's not um, so glamorous and everything, mm -hmm. but being able to develop this mindset, it really um, staves off a lot of depression that I see that a lot of people are just, uh, you know, racked with. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to me, it seems like it's just because everybody wants more than what they have, which doesn't really make you happy in the long run once you get it. You know, there's been uh, examples like Robin Williams, right? I mean... So, yeah. Right. So how much is all this stuff really going to make you happy? So that's why I uh, really like the attitude of do the best you can with what you got. That or like paralysis analysis, you know, you're like trying to figure out what's the best thing to do or get or be. And then you're just like stuck in this mind experiment and not actually doing anything, not moving forward. Right. That's true. And we get stuck there a lot because of our technology. We can just keep watching it and watching it yeah. and watching it yep. and never doing. You don't get off the computer and you don't actually see what's in your house and what you can make the best of. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even think about it that way. That's Well, uh, good. See? Yeah. Where am I keep? You're, you're bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think of a lot uh, financially, too, because a lot of people don't think about, like, financial prepping. And it's, it's kind of huge. Um, and so... 
you know, for me, I had been trying to pay off like credit cards and, uh, you know, really get my finances in order before we hit kind of this financial debacle in our life. And so having that step ahead was like monumental because even though now I've kind of fallen behind a little bit, you know, we're going to get back on track. However, I had the room to be able to it, put out that helped. safety net. Yeah, it helps from, to keep it from being as detrimental. Right. Yeah, if yeah. everything was already maxed out and you had yeah. nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's we would have been. without a paddle. Yeah, super screwed. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so I like to encourage everybody, you know, be paying off the debt, taking care of the credit cards especially, you know. Um, Don't try and do not try to one up the Joneses. Right. Yeah. Live within your means. Below your means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if Below you your can. Means. Yeah. If you can. That's the goal. Yep. That's true. And then, you know, um, as far as even groceries, have you seen like a huge um, increase in um, grocery costs and things like that out there as well? Yes, ma'am. It's silly. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. When yeah, you they're get like, to the cash register, it's like, there's nothing in my cart. Yeah. And right? the more and the healthier you want to be, the worse it is. Yes. I mean, if I want to like ring dings or something, I'm good. <laughs> it's true. It seems like everything is just getting so much more expensive that it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's nothing in the cart. Oh, it's $150. You're like, yep. what? what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. So I've been really trying to make sure that um my bulk items, you know, I go to those Costco, yeah, you know, Sam's Club, whatever. Uh, we go to uh, Smart and Final out here. It's like a restaurant supply store. Oh, cool. And, yeah. And like their meats aren't spectacular. You can buy like bulk meat. Um, so you can buy like a pack of tri-tips, like seven tri-tips for like 60 bucks, 68 bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a great deal. You got to do a lot of butchery and stuff when you get home. Yourself. But that's okay. That, exactly. If I can save that kind of money. You know, you go to the grocery, the local grocery store, you're paying $20 for one of those tri-tips. So um, as far as food stores go, that's, that's kind of the way to go. And I talked a little bit about this last week or the other week. I don't think it was last week when I did my top, top 10 lessons that I've learned mm -hmm. and uh, like people storing stuff in the walls and that <laughs> like, uh, that's just silly. You know, you got to rotate your product and yep. I don't know. We have weevils out here. Do you have weevils back there? We wobble, but we don't fall down. No, I don't think so. Right. I, they like I mean, get into the flower. Do, I haven't experienced them. Yeah, they like get into the flower they, and stuff like that. Are they like tiny, tiny little like uh, caterpillar looking things? Uh huh. Not, yeah, like, not as big as a caterpillar, but that's the best. Yeah, but like super small, like yeah. um, almost like a little mega. Yeah, I think we do have them, but I haven't. I haven't. We've been lucky. Yeah, we don't have them, and we did not have them in Michigan. Mm -hmm. But then coming out here, oh man, you can get like a weevil infestation in your pantry. And do you they, think it's the climate? Yeah, yeah. Warmer, I do. the warmer climates have it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they'll eat like through cardboard. Really? Yeah. So like, if you have a canister of oatmeal in your pantry, they'll eat yeah. out the bottom, and then they can get your whole <laughs> pantry. Yeah. So we have to like take, um, you know, if we buy boxes of rice roni and stuff like that, we put it in a Ziploc bag and put it back in the box. And that way the weevils can get into it. They can't go through plastic. So hmm. it's kind of like, oh yeah, I'd just fill my walls up with rice so I could have weevils all my walls. No. <laughs> we do that. We have the, like the plastic containers that my okay. wife puts the stuff in. So I guess that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, um, you know, like the clear plastic, you can put all the whatever rice and oatmeal. Yeah, and it has a nice seal lid on it. Yeah, it's all the same size. It's yeah, yeah, yeah um, and like flour, we keep all our flour in the fridge because of that out here in California. Huh. Yeah, I know we yeah. never had to do that in Michigan, but out here it's weevils. Well, so. knock on wood. Yeah, right. Now that we talked about it, I don't want to get it now. Probably. <laughs> right? Yeah, they, they turn into like these super tiny moss hmm. eventually. So, yeah, not fun. So that's why I was like, you know, you guys, you got to rotate your stock. Make sure you're taking care of your stuff and, and uh, not storing it in your walls. Seems silly to me. Yeah. But hey, whatever. And you would yeah. think there's different stages of storage too. There's like everyday use and then there's like short term. And then long term, and then 
really bad term. Yeah. <laughs> so some stuff you could like put away because that's true. The long term storage, which you hope you would never have to use, yeah, um, might be a little further away, and then you know that's like you might get to it every decade or something for the. Short. Yeah, and they send like really nice cases too. Usually yeah. comes yeah. in like good casing. Um, I know I ordered from uh, Patriot Supply. Yeah. And they send it in like these sweet plastic cases that like can slide under your bed and stuff. I mean, the cases alone are really nice. I was like, nice. dude, I'd pay for these cases, let alone the food that's in them. Nice. Yeah. I like Patriot Supply, so I always try and uh, give them a little bit of freebie promo. Nice. No, I haven't tried them yet. I'm a, yeah, I got um, like a lot of the hiking stuff, all that kind of food that I use. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mountain house and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lisa uses... Oh. Uh, Is it Legacy? Uh, no. But, well, they advertise Legacy. Yeah. But, oh, Augustine Farms. Aug yeah, Augustine. Augustine. Yeah, that's the Augustine one. Farm. Yeah. yeah, and they do a lot of single products, which I think is really cool, like the butter, you know, cheap, yeah. where it's not like a mix-up already. And uh, I think that's pretty cool to have some of those kind of things on hand. I just had somebody give me a uh, canned bacon. <laughs> uh, my stocks are going now. <laughs> You're canned like, bacon. Canned bacon. It's yeah. off. <laughs> You're like, you want some? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I would take the canned bacon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for um, my birthday present, Ellen sent me a hydration station from uh, BattleBox because <laughs> I have a birthday coming up in June. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, there's some aspects of it that are, like, super cool, and then there's some you're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's all right. There's, like, it looks like a life straw, yeah. but it tests the radiation in the water. No kidding. Yeah. I'm like, this is pretty cool. The, it's kind of, uh, some of the items are kind of lacking directions, so I thought that was something. You can't, that like, I, YouTube, you can't. Uh, oh, I'm sure I could, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've worked on a transmission of my truck by YouTube in it. <laughs> right? I know. My mom repairs her Mustang by yeah. YouTubing it. I'm like, yeah, go, mom. So, um, and then there was a couple of fla flasks in there. Like, <laughs> I could fill them up with rum or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, it wasn't filtering water. It's just a couple of flasks. I'm like, hey, because you never know. Yeah. No. It's like, you go south of the border, you don't drink the water, right? <laughs> Fair enough. They're racist. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty cool, though. A uh, little breakdown, like, water container. And um, I was thinking there'd be more filtration systems in there than there was. But um, You should do a – you should do a, a – post a um, – A little video on it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just – I just ripped it open the other day because I was all excited <laughs> to get it in the mail, you know. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I've got the Sawyer, the Life Straw. The, I forget there's one of those, like, has a little straw and has a pump – they use it for hiking. I don't remember the manufacturer's name, but um, I've got a couple of different water filtration. Yeah, I used to be all into the Life Straw, and then uh, one of my friends then, was like, "Yeah, uh, you would you like to eat spit soup?" Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I never really thought about that." <laughs> so yeah, I went to the Sawyer Mini. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of, well when you start prepping, you go this way, and then you yep. learn. And well, and it was cheap, right? The, the life straws are cheap. You oh, yeah. Them in the hiking bag. 14 and... bucks on sale. Yeah, they work really good. Yeah. I mean, um, we have an AquaPure water filter. Oh, nice. And that's, that's, it's a huge one. I mean, we use it every day. They um, have like a jerry can, don't they? Yeah, it's like two, um, I think they're two, two gallon uh, cylinders that sit on top of each other. Oh, okay. And the top one has a big filter in it. And uh, so even when we go camping, you can just take like a t-shirt or whatever and throw it across the top. And then you throw in the lake water in there and it can filter out. It's a great filter, 0.2 microns. And nice. it a, yeah, it does a great job and filters a ton of water. And we use it literally every day because our, our well is, uh, we come up to a holding tank and then it comes into the house. Mm -hmm. Lots of iron and stuff in the water. So um, yeah. Like the Berkey, but, but better priced or? Yeah, um, yeah, price is great. I mean, I think I paid, uh, I think I paid around one fifty for the unit originally, mm -hmm. and it's like ninety bucks to replace the filter. And I think I used the filter for almost two years. Wow! Before it like plugged up, 
Because so we how have many, so much calcium in the water. How much would you have paid for all that bottled water? Oh, a ton. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, because we were buying bottled water. We yep. still buy bottled water, but we were buying like the jugs to keep in the fridge, you know. Right. It's because when we make pasta, we use that water. When we So, yeah, it was a great investment as far as it goes. And then I was thinking, even if you were in an SHTF situation, you had to take that filter out, you could put your different um, medias in the top part and mm -hmm. still use it as a filter. Mm -hmm. It would work just as good. So love the Aquapure. I've definitely, and then I get that over at Patriot Supply too. It's a good, good system. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so let's yeah. see. Best you can with what you got. Everything, right? Yeah, like, like you said, people need to, the smart prepper would look at to see what they actually have and what tasks they want to prepare for and make what they have do the task, right? Isn't that the way to do it? That's it. Is that the smart way? Yeah. That's why I'm always like tools and knowledge, not stuff. Like the 50 caliber mounted on the front of the, the MRAP, you know, cruising through downtown urban. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Target. Yeah, that's Hollywood. Yep, that's for sure. But it sure does look cool on Pinterest, you know. Oh, wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> right. Oh man, I have so many times I wish I had just the rocket should, launcher on the front of see, my car. <laughs> you should see all the poor stuff I sent to Dale. Dale Goodwin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm always finding this stuff on auction. It's like, Dale, this is what you need to get. <laughs> <laughs> First tractor. Yeah. He's <laughs> like a robo tractor. There's like, you know, those deuce and a half trucks, those like big monster, like Vietnam era trucks. Uh huh. It was like a deuce and a half, and it had like this big communications box on the back of it. I was like, Dale, look, this is what you need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I watch uh, Angry Cops on YouTube and, uh, he just did a huge one on like their the um the three M earplugs were defective, and he went off about like all the other defective things. He's like one of their like jamming systems. If mm -hmm. you like even come near it, it's like instant nausea, gonna throw up, just die of the flu. And that's like the, the soldiers and that are around those kinds of things all the time. He's like, didn't that happen in about? Cuba? Oh, is this ten right? term? Yeah, didn't yeah. it happen in Cuba where the people, like the government people got sick? Yep. Yeah. So who knows what that actually was, mm -hmm. but he was talking about those same kind of systems that are just Interesting. gnarly to be around. So I don't know if you'd want one of those on your truck running around <laughs> in an SHTF situation. Unless oh, you, look cool though. Yeah. You can make people instantly sick with it and then they wouldn't be able to shoot back maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, here you go. But... Yeah. All righty, ma'am. Well, I don't know what to, I've kind of lost track of time. I haven't been very on the ball like I normally am. I've been just having fun. Well, I'm hoping we go into overtime. We're going get, into overtime, get, right? Yeah, I get paid time and a half, don't I? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, this yeah. is this is fun. I'm, I'm glad you asked me, although it's kind of unnerving to be on this side of the mic because I'm a listener, not a talker, but... Um, I love what you're doing, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Well, you know, when you were like, hey, you can't, you can't stop your show. What do you need? Yeah, okay. well, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's I need a co-host, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> let, me, yep. let me look at my network to see who I can get for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> what, what do they tell you about talking, speaking out in class? <laughs> yep. Just keep your head down. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you speak up, there you oh, go. I, was I like, never oh. learned. Because, <laughs> you know, um, the interviews were a major, major time uh, consumption mm -hmm. for me. Love to do them. Don't get me wrong. And I'll still make sure, we, uh, you know, I have a few scheduled out or something like that uh, when we get a chance. Maybe try and do like once a month or one every other month or something. Yeah, it's a great format. I mean, the, right. the book and then the, the expert on that subject, it's great format. Yeah. Yeah. And this, like, like I was telling you, this, you know, when we go into Endless Night, there's a lot of, uh, of social message in that book instead of necessarily like hands-on tasks, mm -hmm. right? So going into this next season, I really wanted to highlight a lot of what's going on in the actual community around us, like resources that people have to reach out to and things like that. And you're definitely the guy for, 
for that as far as it goes because you're just the yeah if you want to talk average joe i'm your man <laughs> yeah right you're the guy who connects <laughs> us all together man so i was like it'll be perfect for this season and uh love having somebody to be able to knock ideas off of instead of just well this is what i did last week <laughs> you know i'm not a uh I open up more when I'm talking with somebody else. So hopefully the listeners will love that too. So I hope so. This is fun. This has been fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't thank you enough. Like, uh, it really means a lot to me that you did reach out and that, um, we're going to keep the show going. You know, Ellen was like, no, I'm crying too. Yeah, I know. Like, well, that's what I did. I got right on with you. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's unacceptable. <laughs> I was like, dude, I just don't know how I can keep doing it. And I don't want to just be a talking head. So that was a crushing episode. It was really hard for me to record mm -hmm. as well. I, I, I sat down many times like, okay, I'm going to do it. Nope. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not ready. I can't do it yet. So, um, well, yeah. I've got my, my camouflage changing earth hat on and I'm ready. So Woo! Yeah, everybody's <laughs> gotta get hooked up with one of those. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, as soon as I'm um through some of the stock that I have, because I just have a few few uh shirt slaps and hat slap, um, I found out that um Amazon has a really good uh uh purchase point for doing merchandise and stuff. Oh, nice. So I'd be able to expand like the amount of designs and stuff that I can offer. So I'm kind of waiting for that to happen. That's that's my next step there. Well, I love the T-shirt. It's great. Right. I wore that around. To, yeah, I went to Heritage Life Skills and uh, wore that around. Everybody's, Everybody's like, oh, like, yeah. Sarah's hooking you up. <laughs> it's awesome. Yep. Yeah, and I got it on sale, like super cheap right now. So anybody that wants it's got to get over there and get that. So. And then of course I got to send a shout out to all my subscribers and thank them for everything that they do because uh you know, um, like all the hosting companies and stuff, they just increase their prices, which is what everybody's doing. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So it takes a little bit of coin to keep the podcast going, you know, not just time in, but also um, coin to make sure that it's available on all the channels and all that stuff. So subscribers awesome. are awesome. Yeah. Good they're people. Care of that. Yeah. And then, of course, got to thank the listeners. You're no longer a listener, Chan. No, oh, I can't thank myself. No, anymore. you've come full circle. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta thank everybody else who's out there now listening to your voice on the on the air. Thanks, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got chosen out of uh many, many applicants. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, the app the, that video I sent in must have worked. Like <laughs> yeah. dancing yeah. with the stars. I made it. <laughs> You're on the air. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. Well, we can break it down like I can do. Uh, okay, until next time, dream. What? Oh, then no. you got to say survive, right? No. So I'll be like, until next. Oh, you just want me to take it all. I got to just take it all still. Oh, my God. I'm so, uh, the pressure. The, the pressure, performance. I know. Sticks does this to me when I'm on his show, too. Something about oh, yeah, nuts. nuts and stuff. And, and I'm, a, I'm like talking about nuts and my, my brain <laughs> goes all haywire. All that this makes, crazy. Yeah, makes all the blooper moments. clips, me talking about nuts, you know, it's just great. <laughs> all right, so until next time, remember, dream, survive, thrive. Thank you for joining Sarah for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Day After Disaster, Without Land, The Walls of Freedom, Battle for the South, and Dark Days in Denver at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. If you love Sarah's books and this podcast, please head over to Amazon or iTunes and let everyone know by leaving a review.